Hey there, Ben Lipper here. Today I'm going to show you how to code a robot known as Scorpion Light. This robot is honestly one of my favorites. It is basically the Scorpion robot without pneumatics and actually, in my opinion, a lot easier to build. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to code this guy. Um, it's kind of a bit of a handful, but I think we can do it. It should end up fantastic. So let's get to work on how to code this robot. So, Scorpion Light, basically anytime you code a robot, the first thing we're gonna do is we gotta add all of our devices. We gotta make sure all our motors are hooked up. All this robot has is six motors and nothing else. So, what that's gonna look like is when you hop into devices, the first thing we always add is a drivetrain. So, my drive is plugged in on, ooh, one and six. Um, anytime you have one of these robots, you do have to decide what side the front is gonna be. So here, basically, when I'm looking at the robot, here's what it looks like. I've decided this is gonna be the front. It's totally fine to decide this is going to be the front. What's not fine is to decide this is gonna be the front, and then you know a week later, change your mind and say this should be the front. Either side is fine, just pick one and commit. That's all that, you, that's all that matters. Basically, I'm gonna pick the claw to be the front. If you haven't picked one, I'd suggest you copy me, that way your code is easier to write. But one or another, I've got the claw being in the front, so I'm gonna pretend like I'm sitting here, like driving it with the claw at the front facing forward. And then I'm gonna go ahead and check this out. This is gonna be my left drive motor, the one here on the left side, driving these left wheels. Flip it over here, that's this motor. Trace that wire, and it goes to port six. So left motor's on port six. So here we are, left motor is on six, right motor is on one, no gyro, and we are in business. Next thing is I need to go ahead and add a single motor. This motor, if you take a look at it, is what drives this arm right here. Not the back one, this front arm right here that's going up and down. That is driven by this little set of gears in here. There's a motor underneath here that drives that, and that motor is plugged into port four. So this one is port four. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, here. There we go, port four. Uh, this is gonna be my pin arm. And my pin arm goes up and, oops, up and down, done. Then I have one more arm that is going to be, actually, let's do my claw first. So claw is gonna be this guy right here, pretty straightforward, but this claw is plugged in to port, probably five, right? Yep, sure enough, that one's plugged in to port five. So it'll go open and close but it's gotta be plugged into port five, so that's a single motor on port five. And what do we call this claw um, that opens and closes. Next thing is I'm gonna jump in here. We got a motor group. Um, this motor group is going to be this arm right here. So this arm in the back, you can see it spins these two gears, which in turn spins these two motors. So as this goes up and down, you can kind of see these two motors right here are being spun. That is gonna be ports two and three. So, here we are, two, three. This is gonna be my beam arm, which again goes up and down. Now, anytime you have a motor group, you have to remember this. One of the motors is reversed. Which one, you say? I have no idea. It's always a toss up. But you try reversing one, and then if everything's backwards, then you reverse the other one and unreverse the first. That's important, so done. Now let's go ahead and add our controller. There's our controller, one, two, three. This is my favorite. You can pick any of these drive configurations. Some people like this one, this tank drive. Um, this is just like, you know, left stick, right stick. And then this is my go-to. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm always against this, but I'm going to do it right now because the, I have a good reason, so trust me on this one. But usually whenever I am teaching someone how to code, I'll always say, all right, look at your controller. When you're driving, you drive like this. Right, you move these joysticks and then your fingers are already on these buttons so it's really easy to hit them. These buttons, you actually have to stop driving and go down to push them. And so usually I say, all right, go ahead, code everything on these buttons and the joysticks obviously because you're driving with the joysticks and then you're good to go. Um, and if you can avoid using these buttons at all, um, do that. Now, I'm not going to do that right now and just trust me, I will eventually pull the things off of F that are there right that I'm about to put there, but just know that ordinarily, that's not how I code. Um, this is just a little bit of a special situation. So we're gonna go ahead on, on the R buttons, put the pin arm on the F buttons. I'm gonna put the uh, beam arm on these buttons. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the claw, hit down. Perfect, and then we would effectively be ready to drive. So I'll hit download. Oh, why are you not working? Brain powered off. 
Turn the brain on. We're linking almost. Make sure we're connected. Connected to the controller. That one more time. They're linked all right. All right, I guess we're doing it the old fashioned way. And download. Here we are. So now you can go ahead and head over to our robot. And effectively, all we're gonna do is test it out. So I've got my drive turn. Remember I said this was the front? Let's drive forward. Ooh, that's bad. Now let's check turning. Anytime driving is reversed, check turning. And notice turning is also reversed. That's good. It's real easy to reverse both. If you have one reverse, it means your drive trains get set up wrong. But both reverse, that's fixable. Now. Um, claw, this should be open. That's open. There's close. That's good. Notice though, when I let go, it kind of automatically closes. I'm gonna have to fix that. So let me show you, let me just show you how to fix both of these right now. So drivetrain, remember drivetrain was backwards. Just hit the down arrow here. Boom, it's fixed. My uh, claw, it doesn't need to be reversed at all, but it has two issues actually. One is that it's a little bit weak. Um, it's not moving at 100% velocity. So I'm gonna set the velocity of actually everything, my beam arm, my pin arm, and my claw. All of these need to be set to 100% velocity. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my claw stopping mode to hold. And in fact, I'm gonna do that for all three of them. That's gonna keep it from kind of getting all wishy-washy. I'm not gonna download this yet though, because I wanna make sure that I show you exactly what I mean. So logic, this is, all has to be under a when started block. So hopefully you put yours under one. I lost mine though. Before I download it though, let's head back to the robot. And you can actually see, you see how my, like I could lift up some pins, oops. I lift up some pins and they just fall back down. You know, I lift up the pins and they just fall back down. Same is true for my beam. Oops, my beam, remember I put it on these buttons right here. Oh, and they're reversed too, look at this. If I hit the up button, it goes down, and I hit the down button, it goes up. So I gotta reverse that. This was correct. This was correct. But here we go. If I go up, and imagine I had any weight in here, it's going right back down. So that's what setting them to hold does for you. It keeps that from being an issue. And then I said I had to reverse my beam arm. Remember how I said to reverse it? Flip the other one. Don't make both reverse. Don't make both normal ever. They're always. One will be reversed, one will not be reversed. You just have to figure out which one it is. Sweet, so now we're ready to go. Go ahead and download this puppy. And we, I think, are in business. So what you can tell now is driving is now correct. Here, you can see it better if I hold it here. Forward, backward, turn, turn. That's very good. Now I hit this up button. It closes and it holds itself there. You see that claw? Um, here, I'll back up a little bit. You see that claw holds itself in position no matter where it stops. That way it holds some beams. Then I've got the same here for that arm. It's holding itself in position. And then, of course, this guy is also holding himself in position. Sweet. So I'm feeling pretty good there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start coding some other stuff, though. In general, when I'm driving, this is something interesting. Here, let me just show you on the robot. When I'm driving, Sometimes I want more precise control over this arm, especially because I have this like little passive claw. You know, you don't have any pneumatics here. That's cool. But because I have this passive claw, sometimes it's a little delicate, tends to drop pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it so that this guy, um, I have really precise control over the arm. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a joystick. So I've got my controller here. This is forward, backwards. This is turning. And you do not have to do this if you don't want to. This is something that just personally I enjoy. This is going to be arm up, and this is gonna be arm down. Now, I have to be very careful when I'm driving. Now, because if I push this up into the side, the robot's gonna raise the arm and turn. If I push it down into the side, the same thing's gonna happen. Also, if I turn and I don't keep the joystick horizontal, instead it's a little bit up, the arm's gonna start going up or down based on um, how I'm holding this joystick, you see that? So, if you're good, 
this can be a really clean way to control the arm. This is how I always do it. This is how Joseph always does it. But I will warn you, not all teams like it because of that issue. So how do you code it? First of all, you can only code things in one place. So I told you I was going to pull these guys off of the F buttons. They're gone. Look at that. Instead, we are going to say, um, all I need to do is set the velocity of my beam arm to whatever the controller is. So controller. And it is the D axis is what we're looking at here. If you just take a quick look here, you can see this is the D axis. This is D up down there. So that's D. Um, and then we do have to tell it to spin. So spin the beam arm, you say up or down, uh, whatever the top one in the menu is, so up. Um, and this is great. We do it once. We actually have to hit throw it in a repeat forever. And we just put it under a when started. This stuff is going to happen instantaneously. So it's going to instantly jump into here. We're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and download that. Now, let's go ahead and see how this works. So I've got, you know, close claw, open claw, pin arm up, down, and then beam arm. Oh, look at that. And I can control it so smoothly if I want it to go slow. If I want it to zoom, I've got control of that. Just remember, if I do that, it's going to start turning while it moves. So for me, like, I've gotten the hang of it. But again, just be aware, that's something you're going to have to be ready for. Like, see, I can move it up and down without it turning, and I can turn without it moving up and down. But, you know, some people, their turn and their arms going to start moving up at the same time as they're turning. So just something to be aware of. Sweet, that's great. The one thing that I haven't coded that I do want to show you guys how to do is basically in a match, it's very, very common that you will have, actually this is in fact the goal, it's very popular that you'll have something like this. One, two full stacks in there, and you'll have a beam in here, and you need to deal with it. Basically, what you need to do is you need to flip your arm over, let go, flip your arm back. So it's a three-step motion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to code it so that you only have to push one button. That way you as the driver can be thinking about other things like match strategy while the robot is doing the whole motion for you. So here's how, you, how we're going to do it. I'm going to say um, when EF is pressed, that's the button I'm going to use. When EF is pressed, I'm going to lift up the pin arm. This is going to take about two seconds, so move the pin arm for two seconds. Release the claw for about one second and then move the pin arm all the way back for two more seconds to get ready to pick up the next pins, which I'm going to need to stack this puppy on. Remember, and this is going to go up, and then you're just going to stack it like so. So how do we do this? Real simple. Check this out. So we are right here on, in our code. I am going to say controller when I said E up is pressed. Oh, that's great. We want to, come on, spin the pin arm up. Oh, that's funny. Spin your pin arm up. I told you it would probably about wait, take about two seconds, and we got to stop the pin arm. So I told you it would take about two seconds. That's generic for most robots. But if you're, you want to see if you can tune yours and get faster, be my guest. Great. Then we are going to need to spin the claw open for about one second. Stop the claw. Then we are going to need to spin the pin arm down for two seconds. Stop the pin arm. Perfect. Go and download that code. And here's our robot once again. Let's go ahead and just conceptually see if that worked. That was E up that I coded that guy on. So, oh, it's mad. There we go. Hit e up, then go over the head, release, and come back. All right, that looks good. Now let's actually test it with pins and a beam. So here we go. One, two, three, four pins. All right, our robot, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the programming cable. I was trying to program wirelessly, but it wasn't behaving. But that's okay. So we got that. 
beam locked in. Now I'm just gonna go ahead, hit that big button. Oops, forgot to grab the pins. Wait for it to come back. Make sure you grab the pins first. Now, over the head, release, and bring it back. And now I'm in a position to go ahead, raise this boy up, and place it on a stand-up pull. Very good, very good. All right, so that is it for programming Scorpion Light. Now, if you're like, Ben, could you just show me a little bit more? There is a whole video on how to program Scorpion where I cover different concepts that I think might be helpful to you. I cover something called push on, push off, which um, is honestly a really cool technique. And then um, this one, obviously, I cover joystick control. I cover that play sequence in both of them. But if you're interested in more, like I said before, click that link under the video. I'm gonna send you all the details from this video. I will also send you links to those other videos so you can go and watch those too. Um, and hopefully that'll be really helpful to you. So one or another, thanks for coming to my coding academy and I look forward to seeing what you build this year.